All right, Tour of Luxembourg, stage one. Prologue was won by Damon Gaudin for Direct Energy yesterday. Uh, you can see here we've got a bit of Varane's Willem Classics on the front. I was going to warn you already, we've got some shocking camera footage coming up. Uh, Tour of Luxembourg didn't really seem to know what they were doing a lot of the time. We also have a huge crash with 1.3 kilometers to go if you want to skip to that. Pretty exciting. People end up in bushes and bikes end up flying into fields. So you can see it's absolutely strung out here. Three kilometers to go. They're basically just trying to get in the right position. So Coffles on the right hand side for uh, Christophe Laporte. We then have uh, Direct Energy uh, for Adrian Petit. We also have a couple other blokes, Veranda Willems Classics for Andre Kirsch, I believe. And we have a, now a flashback for three kilometers to go when old Stein de Volder roll back, rolls back the years and decides it's time to go on this little short uphill thing. Now, the sprinters teams don't really want to chase him that much on the uphill because they don't really want to tire their sprinters out. In reality, what they want to do is just try and let him go on the uphill and then just get him back on the flat where the sprinters can draft and they're not going to be too tired. Right, here we go with some great camera footage. Here we go from the back. I love this one. You really can see such great detail of what's happening on the front. Really useful. Anyway, all jokes aside, you can see now the pace has settled down quite a lot. It's no longer completely strung out. <coughs> Sorry about that. It's no longer completely strung out. It's instead just sort of bunched up, uh, which is means that someone's going to attack. And I think we get a couple more people like CCC Spani Polkovici decide it's time to go. If you're at the back now, there's no chance of moving to the front. You can see teams on the left-hand side are trying to get everyone gathered up. I believe that's Veranda's Willens Classics, but it's hard to see. Um, you can see the bunch is not, it's not really that strung out. So it's not 100% full gas, which is uh, interesting because with two kilometers to go, I guess no one just has the lead outs anymore because it's only six riders in these races. So it's like, it's real tough. Um, no, seven riders, I think. No, six, six or seven riders. Anyway, not many riders in this race. So it is real hard um, to actually lead the sprint out. So you can see Adrian Petit has one of his teammates in the uh, breakaway to just like to this little gap just to try and, I guess, I mean, they don't have to work. A bit of boxing there for position with CCC, Spanning Polkovici. We can see Kovitz is now coming up. They've got three, four guys, I think, ahead of Christophe Laporte. This guy does a turn, realizes he's in the middle of nowhere and goes back to help his team out. Damien Gaudin, the yellow jersey for Direct Energy is on the left-hand side of the road. You can see Veranda's Willems Classic are moving up on the right. Uh, no, sorry, Aqua Protect moving up on the left-hand side uh, from this camera angle. And you'll see in a minute we have a little crash, 1.3 kilometers to go on the left-hand side of the road. Just keep your eyes out for it. Overlap of wheels and people go flying. So anyway, this is a real fast downhill. They'll be going 60, 65 k's an hour down here, uh, possibly more. Uh, Aqua Protect now moving up the right-hand side and Coffert is a change position luckily to the left hand side and managed to avoid this crash which I'm going to talk about uh, in a minute. You can see uh, I believe that's Aqua Blue on the right hand side again trying to move up and we hot Rompot. So watch the Rompot boys, they uh, they suffer from this crash. Uh, and you can see Oscar and Basimir have a couple of blokes there. They keep pretty well hidden but they are there. So, right, so here we go right hand side of the road. Keep your eyes peeled. Uh, you will see just now someone overlaps their wheels just there, goes flying and Rompot man, his bike ends up in the field. Um, they basically just lent on each other. One guy didn't realize they were going to lean on each other and just went flying. Replay that if you want. It's pretty exciting. Anyway, you can see all these boats trying to do a bit of cyclos, get around him. That guy's hit into a tree, but Damien Gaudin doesn't give a fuck because he's on the front absolutely launching it as hard as he can to try and string these people out because this is a real technical run-in. And if you're on the front, it's going to be real hard to make up the position because these corners are not. There's only really one line. You can't take another line. So you can see here we've got a bit of a right-hander and then this TV camera motorbike says Cheerio. We get a see old old mate with his bike in the middle of nowhere, and now we just have to wait 300 meters to go when that guy goes. So you really need to have your lead up, man. Like, you want to be at the front at this 300 meters to go. You see Coffin has absolutely railed that corner for Christophe Laporte. Christophe Laporte has his bloke on the front, and this bloke is just going to be thinking, I need to go to about 150 meters to go. Have to go to 150 meters to go. He can see 200 meters, and he keeps going. You can see Adrian Petit is way too far back. We've got Escali Bas Marias, man, as well. And we also have Andre Kirsch from Aquaprotect. And he just goes the port and just no one can get around him because he just had such a he just left it so late on the sprint. It was actually great lead out work because he was so that's how you lead out from the front. If you want to lead out from the front, you have to leave it really late, as they did, 150 meters to go. And as soon as he launches, it's so hard to like gain enough time on the 150 meters to actually win. Uh, so that was great sprinting by Christophe Laporte. Uh, great lead out work, really. That was that's what I'd say. They they held back took him in that last corner, and then just launched him at 150 to go. 150 to go, you have to be real strong to get around someone. Uh, and all these guys are pretty similar strength. Uh, so that, that was what happened. So anyway, cheers for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little race footage. We've got, we've got a bit more coming up. I'll try and do some Dauphiné stuff, but we all know the ASO don't like when you use their content. So I'm, it may be happening on DTube. I'll let you know if I'm going to do it on DTube or not. But they don't have copyright rules there, so I, I may be um, doing that on the DTube instead. So anyway, cheers for watching. 
and I will see you in the next video.